Okay, so today we finally see how the the wage and price and everything plays out in the market. So what I'm going to do is remember what we had done in the last lecture is we found the price in the market and we developed an equation for the wage. So I'm going to start with the wage thing. So what we had, remember, was W equals to P times a function of U and Z. Now, here's the thing. When we talk about price, you have to immediately think about the nominal and the real case. So I'm earning a certain amount of money and that allows me to buy a certain level of good. I don't really care about how much money I'm earning, whether this, this is a hundred taka or a thousand taka or a million taka, I really don't care. All I care about is what I can buy with this. So workers don't care about nominal wage, they care about the real wage. And if the price level in the market is going up, they're going to demand a higher wage because they want to maintain their standard of living. And the same is true with firms as well. When firms pay you a wage, firms don't care about uh, the, the nominal wage that they're paying. What they care about is the good that they're selling at the market. And what is the, what is the price that they're receiving from selling this good? Now, if price level goes up in the market, the firm will be willing to pay its workers a higher wage. So effectively, for example, if price level doubles, workers will see that they can now buy half the number of goods that they could usually buy. So they're going to demand twice the wage in nominal terms. And same thing for firms, if prices double, they're going to see that their revenues have doubled. They're earning twice as much as what they were earning previously. So they will be willing to pay the workers twice as much in, in, real, in nominal terms. So what we want to do, so this equation is in the nominal case. What we want to do is convert it into real case. And remember the way of Converting anything to the real case is to divide it by P. We've done this in the first lecture. If you guys remember, it was here somewhere. I'm not going through that mess again. So what we end up with is W by P wage adjusted for price. That, if you remember, is the real price, uh, real wage level. So this is equal to P by P times function of U Z. Now, of course, this and this cancels out. And what we are left with is W by P is equals to function of U and Z. And this is, we have this in the real term. And this relationship, this is known as the wage setting relation. Okay, let's try and plot this and see what happens. Okay, so I have an X and a Y axis. I'm going to put unemployment here, U, and I'm going to put real wage here. So not just wage, but wage that is adjusted for the price level. Okay, and what do we know about this equation? We know that this is a negative relationship this is a positive relationship. So the relationship between U and WP is negative. That means this is our wedge setting curve. Okay, let's leave this here for now. Now let's move on to the second equation that we had developed in the last lecture which was, uh, what was it? 
it was price equal to one plus M times wage. Now, once again, the problem is that this is in the nominal case. And the nominal case doesn't tell us anything. We don't care about the nominal case. We want to convert this into the real case. How do we do that? We adjust for price dividing both sides by P. So what we get is P by P equals to one plus M by W divided by P. So this and this cancels out obviously. And what we are left with is W by P equals to one divided by one plus M. This now, uh, not nominal, this is in the real term. And this relationship is known as, uh, what's it known as? Uh, it's known as the price setting relation. And if we draw this on the, on the same curve here, now notice one thing. Uh, w by P is equal to one by one plus M. M is an exogenous variable. It's determined from outside our model. So what we have on the right side of the equation is basically a fixed number, a parameter. So this is what we get. This is the price setting relationship. And so what we basically see is that at a particular level of real wage, this is how much unemployment we can expect in the economy. If we put these two together, so this equation, oh, where to go, sorry. So this equation and this equation, what we are going to end up with is, uh, And uh, I'm going to put an N here, UN. UN is known as, this is the equilibrium unemployment rate. So I'm going to go up here. And so this basically, this is the UN because it's at the equilibrium point. But this is also known as the natural rate of unemployment. I mean, don't be uh, confused by the word natural. What it basically means is that for a given level of wage level and other factors and price levels and everything, Accounting for all this information, this is the equilibrium level of employment in the economy. This is what it's, it, the unemployment rate should be naturally. It doesn't really mean anything more than that. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of analysis. We don't, I mean, a small lecture today. We don't have a whole lot left to do. I'll just, draw this here again, U by P, wage setting, price setting. Okay, so let's focus on two separate scenarios. Uh, suppose uh, unemployment benefit goes up. So it goes up and another scenario, suppose uh, pollution goes up. Let's start with the first one, unemployment benefits go up. So if you don't know what unemployment benefit is, it's basically if you don't have a job, you're searching for a job, but you can't find a job, governments will give you a certain amount of money. It's not a lot of money, obviously, but you will be 
like obvious the government doesn't want you to starve to death so you will be given some money so i'm not touching the diagram right now let's think about this a bit what do you expect to happen to unemployment when unemployment benefits are very high think about it for a bit pause the video if you want to uh, so in USA, for example, unemployment benefits are very low. They're almost non-existent. But in the European Union, in France, for example, the unemployment benefits are much higher. So if you lose your job, you will receive quite, quite a high level of uh, unemployment benefits from the government. As a result, what we see is that the rate of unemployment is much higher in the European Union, in countries such as France, for example. The reason for that is that if your unemployment benefit is low and you lose your job, you're, you don't have a lot of money coming in and you know, you're used to a certain standard of living and you, you're, you're more desperate to find a job the amount of money that the government is paying you is not very high. So you're more eager to go out and find a job. But in the case of France, for example, if you can maintain a relatively okay standard of living using the unemployment benefits that you get from the government, you're less willing to go out and find a job. And you, maybe you wait a few days, relax, take a break, and then look for a new job. So as a result, if unemployment benefit is going up in the economy, what you would expect is that at the same level of wage, wage rate isn't going up. At the same level of wage, WS curve is going to shift and that is going to increase the unemployment in the economy. You don't mind being unemployed if your unemployment benefit is high. And as a result, unemployment rate in the economy goes up. So that's one example. You can think of the opposite case as well. If unemployment benefits go down, you didn't have a job, but you were receiving unemployment benefits and that gave you an okay standard of living. You weren't desperately searching for a job but then your benefits go down, how much money you're receiving every month or every week suddenly falls. And so you go out and start looking for a job. And if you find one, unemployment rate falls. So that's an example. Uh, let's look at the second case, draw the same diagram again. In the second case, what happens is that pollution goes up. Pollution basically means that when companies in the same sector works together to set a price level. So you've all done Eco 101, so you know how competition works, is that if the price in the market is 10, you can't really go and charge 11 taka because no one's going to buy from you. People will just buy it for 10 taka from somewhere else. So market sort of makes sure that prices are competitive. It's as low as it can be. But if the firms can group together and decide that we're going to charge 15 taka and everyone is going to charge 15 taka, then the price in the market goes up because you can't find anyone to buy the good for 10 taka for. So remember, price was uh, one plus m by w so when collusion takes place this m markup is going up suppose previously you had a small five percent markup now you have 20 percent markup if m goes up take a look at this equation again if m goes up denominator is going up the whole thing this value is falling so what we are going to have is this, it's prime. So what has happened in this case is first of all, unemployment has gone up. So U not to U1, but the wage rate has also fallen. 
why might that be? Why might the wage rate fall? Well, the wage rate falls because, well, the first step to understanding this is to realize that we are not talking about nominal wage, we're talking about real wage. Real wage tells us how much we can buy with our wage. Not the monetary value of the wage, but how much we can buy. So collusion means that price level is going up. If something was 10 taka previously, now it's become 15 taka, price has gone up. And with my level of wage, which is fixed, I can buy less. And that's why we see that real wage has also gone down along with unemployment going up. Next question, why is unemployment going up? Okay, so pollution has gone up. As a result, price level has gone up. As a result, your real wage has gone up. Why did it create unemployment in the economy? Because reservation wage for some of the workers are no longer being met. So this fall in wage means that some of the workers are no longer willing to work at the existing wage level. And so they just stop working. As a result, unemployment goes up. Okay. So I hope this is clear for all of you. Uh, as always, just understand that there's a lot of different ways of analyzing this relationship. I've just gone through two examples of unemployment benefits and collusions. But as long as you guys understand this relationship, it should be possible for you to analyze any given scenario. There are some examples given in the book, so please go through that. Uh, obviously, there will be some practice problems that I solve in the upcoming video. And whatever confusions you have, hopefully will be cleared up from that. So before I end this, I'm going to talk about two of the assumptions that we have made in this chapter. So we're going to relax these assumptions in the coming chapters. So the first one, we have assumed an equilibrium in the labor market. There is no guarantee that the labor market will always be in equilibrium. There may be an excess number of workers who are looking for a job. There may be a shortage in workers. And we're going to look at those scenarios. And the second one, actually we've already discussed, is that we've assumed that the price level will be equal to the expected price level. But the truth is that this will not always be the case. And in the next chapter, or the next next chapter, I'm not actually sure, we're going to look at something called the Phillips curve. And over here, we're going to look at the, the relationship between inflation or the price level and unemployment, which we've looked at today. All right, so that's the end of this chapter.